All right, finally, we are here. We want to look at semi-structured data analysis with JSON. This is take three. You know, we've tried free versions of software that doesn't work, you know, bandwidth issues, disconnected, everything. Now, hopefully this time it works. So Chris, hopefully you can walk us through this uh, before you get started. Um, I'm Jay Rajendran. I'm a product marketing lead at uh, Firebolt and uh, here to help you with your data warehousing needs. So Chris, over to you. Hey, I'm Chris. I'm a solution architect. Uh, what a solution architect does at Firebolt is we work with potential customers, you know, in the beginning, answering questions, making sure that Firebolt's like the best fit for what they need. Um, but then we're here to help you through the whole thing, implementation and even uh, sometimes into support. Uh, so what I wanted to talk about is some misconceptions or some options and, and just talk through JSON and some ways to use it. Uh, both with Firebolt and actually this talk will be good with almost any modern database that supports uh, JSON. Yeah, so Chris, let me ask you this, right? I, you know, I think one of the things that we've talked about is, you know, JSON in its raw form coming in, right? Um, plus, but then you also have to think about it in terms of you know, how you use it, you know, whether it's performant and all that. So walk us through what that might look like depending on the customer needs, right? And how does a customer decide which way to go in, in terms of in a storing JSON? Okay. Yeah, and you know, let's just talk through it like Jay, like you were a customer or, or just customers in general and how I would deal with them on this. The first thing is kind of understanding how this all works together. You have a spectrum of raw JSON and by raw, I mean, it's not turned into columns or anything, it's JSON, you know, with your curly braces and everything. And that's on one end. If we have the opposite over here, we have like third normal form database, right? Everything's broken out in tables, one to many, all that fun stuff, right? The traditional database world. Um, now this is from flexible to performant. So yeah, if you want ultimate performance, you're gonna be flattening your JSON. Doesn't matter what product product you're using, that's always gonna be the fastest because everything is indexed, everything is used to going that way. However, it's a misnomer or a misconception. Customers all the time ask me like, should I have it in JSON or should I have it flattened? But the answer is usually neither or both, depending on how you look at it. Um, there's this whole area in the middle and that's what to me is, is more fun. And so that's the first question you have to decide when you're approaching like, how do I load this JSON into my database? Where do you wanna be on this curve? Do you want to be fully performant? Like has everything gotta be lightning fast and you're doing with you know billions of rows? Then you'll probably be closer this way. Do you want to be flexible? Like we have startups. A lot of times a startup comes to us. We don't really know our data model that well yet, like gaming especially. They say, hey, we're going to change things. We're going to add things to the game. We want to be very flexible. And that'll be more over here. If you were dealing with you know, stock trades or something, you're probably going to be over here. So that's kind of like the first step is just deciding where on the path you want to be. OK. Fair enough. So can you walk me through an example on maybe just that raw JSON, right? And how you can treat it with Firebolt or how you would extract the values. Maybe that's a maybe that's a good place to start. How would you yeah. access it? Right? How would you access it? How yeah, it yeah. So I'm gonna just I'll switch now so you can see some JSON instead that I just made something up here. It's like a shopping cart. Let me share my screen. So here's some sample JSON. So we basically got an order, order ID, you know, here's me buying this, some shipping addresses, uh, some dates. Looks like I'm doing a little woodworking project here. So we'll use this for our example today. So raw JSON, you know, very, very raw would be, this would be one record, right? This whole, from here to here, this would be one record. You're almost never gonna wanna have this as a single record because nothing is indexed. It's very difficult for the server to 
search through this, it's generally going to be reading the entire table every time you want to run a query. So, the, but that's the far left. One notch over to the left would be breaking it down into sections. Like, well, here's the order ID. It kind of stands by itself. It's not very interesting. Here's like buyer. There's a whole section on buyer, and you could, you know, have more or less stuff on there. Order date, and you see items is here. Items is the most interesting one because it's not always the same for every item. For example, we have the category and the item number is the same and prices on all of them, which would be important, but depending on the item, we can have various different tags. And then we have the very important prices here. So the very first step would be all of it. Next step would be those sections. Now, the reason you'd wanna break it down into sections, even if you're gonna leave it in JSON, the sections is very important. Now, this is a small example, but some JSONs is thousands of lines. So when you're breaking it down, it's less for the server to search through. So if I just had items, for example, and I left this as JSON, we're not talking about breaking it into individual fields or arrays or anything yet. Still, if I wanted to say like, what's the price? The traversing is, is only has to go to items and then it can find the price. And the most important thing is, since with Firebolt and many other modern technologies, you're dealing with separation of storage and compute, whatever you're querying as the field is gonna have to bring it over the network. So you want it to be a smaller piece. So that's kind of the first step on that path. Okay, so I have a couple of quick questions, right? So one of the things that there's different types of data within this, right? Correct. Um, so I guess my question to you is just how would you map it to something like a persistent data model on Firebolt. Maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but um, just curious how you might do it. Yeah, before, this data set, right? uh, yeah, on this data set, before we get into like all the options, I mean, we could spend a lot of time talking about all the ways you could consume this. Uh, there is what I call the golden rule of working with your JSON on Firebolt. Anything that you're going to use to join to another table, which frequently we're doing, for example, I'm working with the retail customer right now, they join everything on email, for example, because they get data in from Shopify and from other places and all of them have email. That's the way they're identifying a customer. Uh, some people use IP addresses. There's many different ways you can do that. Uh, anything that you're going to want to join on or you're going to want to filter by frequently. Uh, in this example, if I'm doing like normal BI on this, I'm going to be filtering on order date a lot. Like show me the last yep. the orders for the last month. Yep. So right away, these two items, if that was my pattern, I would definitely be pulling those out into their own field, you know, a text field for email and a timestamp for order date. That will allow the things that are sorting and filtering and, and joining to operate very quickly. That's how you can make your JSON the fastest possible and keep your flexibility is just the columns that are filtering, put them out there, and that will allow you to get to a much smaller set. That's the key. If you're if you're only having to run the whole parsing and finding different things in, deep inside the JSON on a much smaller set, you're going to be more efficient and going to be faster. So, so what does that map to from a Firebolt standpoint? Does it... Uh, you split it out into a separate field. Would you uh, create some sort of an index on it? I guess, how would you approach it? Yeah, so let me go back to the whiteboard a bit. So we already talked about like over here on this end, here we want any join columns or filter. Any like, notes, things that you're not going to query often. You'll have those over here. Okay. Why bother doing all the work to put them in there? You know, you might change notes, whatever. Uh, item names, you know, if we're dealing with BI, we maybe don't care about the description of a book for example, right? Mm -hmm. We want it there so we can see what the customer saw when they bought it in case they say, hey, this description doesn't match what I bought. But we're not really going to be querying saying where description like yeah. Ferrari or something, right? We're not going to be really searching or, or doing anything in the description so we can leave it there. Uh, some of the interesting things comes 
with like the items. It's an, it's an array. We might want the items in the middle here because we might want to search for all items and, and each item in the order is an array within that same field, for example. Okay, so so it was almost like within the JSON, you basically had multiple items. And what you're recommending is, you know, take that and split it out into a set of arrays that I can access separately, correct? Yeah, let me go back to sharing this. So a good example would be items here. It's an array. What I would do, it, it's naturally an array in here, so it'll lend itself to an array inside of Firebolt, for example. So this array would only have two elements in this one. Uh, up here's another one. We got two addresses, right? Pretty cut and dry at this point. Uh, so what that allows, if you filter and you say, hey, I want to look for order number this, then at that point, a single row can have multiple items, and that's with the array column. You can do array of arrays as well. Not very common because it's more uh, difficult to kind of write syntax to look down into an array of an array. Um, but that's pretty common. And then within each item, we have this. So this is a struct. We can either leave that as like JSON text, or you can, for example, create two arrays out of this. One is the key, and one is the values. And so these two are tied by their index. So index number one, you know, is item category, and it's a book. Now, within these, we could very easily put an aggregating index on the sum of price. So we can add that, for example, to pull out just to get that. However, in this data model, it's already here, which would be easy, much easier for the server to do than to pull it out on each item. If we kind of start at the top and think, OK, let's just look at all these sections. What do we want to do? We already said order ID. We want to persist that in the table. We say buyer, well, we know we want to pull out email. We may leave the rest all in its own, or we may create an array for addresses. It really depends on how you're using it. Most of the time in the BI, you would not be using address, but let's say that's how you're saying how many sales I had in the state of Texas. Well, then you're going to need to do something to make that a little bit easier to get through rather than looping through. So that's a potential one. You could create an array of just states, for example, if that's how you're doing it, or zip codes. Order date, we already said that one we want to persist because we're going to be filtering on that. Items, let's just say we're going to do the uh, key value thing and have one array of keys and one array of values, one items. Total and sales tax, well, they're already at the kind of at the root here anyway, so we might as well pull those out. But what I would do in addition, so you, it's not always picking one thing for one area like we just walked through. I would likely say, OK, well, I'm going to keep buyer as well. Because with Firebolt, we're a column-based database. So adding more columns doesn't cost you anything. So I would have like buyer JSON as a column, and it would just be all of this JSON. I would maybe have items JSON and have all this. And then often I would have like entire row JSON. I'm not going to want to be querying that entire row JSON, but carrying it along for the ride doesn't really cost you anything um, other than storage. So I often recommend that, like having it in multiple flavors. That allows that uh, for troubleshooting, for example. If a row just comes in garbled, something isn't right with it, um, somehow there's another tag added in here, and that shifts everything over, right? And normally you're traversing where we say, Hey, well, it's buyer, and then it's address, and it's address type. If someone added some layer in front of here, it would no longer be correctly traversing. So I often say, keep your whole JSON in your row as well for troubleshooting. Jay, you're muted. Of course. Has to happen. <laughs> so uh, I guess where I was going with that was, uh, you, let's say you kind of persisted that to the data model, whatever the data model is, right? Um, you mentioned, uh, if I'm going to filter on it, if I'm going to join on it, put it into its own columns. Is there anything else in terms of, so you know, obviously, this is orders and items. Say I want to get a summary of 
all the orders for the month of say August or something like that, right? And how do you make that performance coming in from a JSON perspective? It's almost like an aggregation, right? So with Firebolt, what would you do in a, in a case like that? Well, with Firebolt, you can create aggregating indexes, which will is like a materialized view. Uh, it's invisible to the end user. You create it on top of the table, and it's keeping track of aggregates. Now, the aggregating indexes can do almost anything except to be doing the extracting out of the JSON. So you can have an aggregating index on an array column, for example, and that's one reason why I might want to put the like prices of the items in an array, because you can do the sum of an array column and then sum for the all orders, not just one order, right? So that is a powerful benefit because then it just has the number right there. Like I know my total is 1.2 million and exactly this, and then you can drill down to the details um, as needed. Okay, uh, that, that's fair enough. Um, I know you mentioned, you know, maybe keeping the raw data as is, right? Uh, which makes sense. So you can go back and refer to it and all that stuff. Um, say the schema changes, right? How do you see customers approaching like the, the 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 JSON structure itself changes over time? And then if I need to, you know, come back and retrofit something or uh, go back and look at data with a different, slightly different schema, modified schema, how would you approach it? Yeah, let me switch back here to the JSON. So that is the exact reason. So thank you for bringing that up, Jay. That's the exact reason where I said, like, hey, let's split out the buyer as its own JSON, even if I am pulling out the state and all that. So the design pattern that I like to use uh, personally and that we use on like the gaming customers, for example, we have a lot of gaming customers and they often start off with a game. It's in alpha or beta or even pre-alpha. And they don't really know like what is it, all this final structure going to be. So that's a good example where they want to stay on the very flexible side. Uh, and so what I recommend for these customers, or really for any customer, unless you're very set on knowing exactly what's in your JSON. Uh, for example, if you're getting your JSON from Shopify, you could probably count that it's going to stay mostly the same. But if it's something you want, you know, or you think there's going to be uh, schema changes, the design that I often recommend is put things into your table, even if you're going to go almost all the way on the right-hand side of the diagram towards the structured, put a view between your tool or your application or your whatever you're using to work with the data, put a view in the database between there pointing at the columns. What that allows you to do is let's say we added a new one here. I don't know. Let's just add. Someone comes in and, OK, now we're going to have nickname, right? Let me say my nickname is, is Coop. So you're going to have that come in. And it's like, oh, no, we don't have a column for that, right? Um, but, but we want to group things and buy that. So in that case, if we already had the whole buyer objects and we had a view sitting between our application, all we would need to do is add the code, uh, you know, the code would look like on Firebolt, it would be like JSON extract. And then we would just put in there by, you know, field, whatever we called it, dot buyer forward slash nickname, right? Mm -hmm. And what we do there is we tell it that's a text and then we go as nickname. So we would just add this for to our view. And that would be fine. It would come out. It would appear to your BI tool as a column. Everything would be be good. Um, but then let's say later you wanted to do some filtering on nickname for some reason. I don't know why you would. But if you want to do some filtering or joining, uh, you could limp along with the view in place. Uh, it would still work. It wouldn't be lightning fast. And then you could wait till you have a sprint available where you could change your your actual table structure, right? That's more difficult and more time consuming to change your table structure than it is just to add a quick little code into your view. So that's why I really like that view pattern. It just it just frees you from the chains of being stuck with your data model exactly the same. OK, fair enough. Um, any other thoughts? I know obviously we covered a whole bunch of stuff. So obviously the thing that I heard was one, obviously if you want to be have the most flexible, you know, you start with the uh, with the raw data. And that also gives you a way to ingest it in. And then looks like you know you have uh, functions that I can use to extract the way I want it. 
And then you can actually persist it into specific structures. It could be arrays, it could be key value pairs, right? So there's a, there's a gamut of things, depending on what, what I want to do from a performance standpoint, right? Or Perfect. if I want to aggregate, right? Have I missed anything? No, other than just, again, to reiterate that you're going to want to chunk it up as much as you can, because even let's say in that example where I didn't think I needed anything from the buyer, it's still nice to have that buyer JSON as a, a JSON, um, because some of the other, um, some JSONs are not as small as that, right? Uh, if we're dealing with ad tech data, sometimes they have millions of things in there, all kinds of clicks and all kinds of stuff in there, uh, and that gets really big. So if you're wanting to pluck something out of that with the sep separation of storage compute, it's going to have to pull over that whole entire field, and that field can be really large. But if you have a, already sliced in subset, it's already there. It's going to be much easier, take up less performance hit. Okay. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you, I mean, you know, uh, on the board, from a performance standpoint, you said third normal form, right? You know, and I know there are other discussions that other folks are very passionate about this stuff. <laughs> I guess the question is, you don't think third normal form when you talk data warehouses, right? So, uh, am I poking oh, the yeah, bear? You definitely can. <laughs> I mean, that's up to you. Rod would uh, Rob would beg to differ, but um, yeah, no, that's going to be much more difficult. You're, you usually you have your JSON you. Some people do. You could pull it into multiple tables, like fully normalize it. Uh, that's really to the extreme. Generally, you're going to want to just one for one. Here's your JSON. I'm going to pull it into that. There are exceptions. Uh, I'm working with a sports team, for example, and the way they get their data, it comes in with all tables all come into the same JSON, and they're all coming in as separate arrays. So it wouldn't even it would be impossible to put it into one table unless you were just pure JSON in there, which we discussed is not going to work for anything you want to do. Yeah, OK. Um, I think this is great. Uh, thanks for uh, walking uh, me through this. Uh, really helpful. Uh, hopefully, the other folks who watch this video, they'll find this as uh, useful as well. You know. So thank you, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Jay.